Hello and welcome to the Daily Devotion here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Goodroad. Our reading today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. This is the Old Testament reading for Septuagesima. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I want you to always be discerning. I want you to not get things confused. It is not a good thing to test the Lord or to quarrel with the Lord. It's not a good thing to ask God, well, are you among us or not? Show us, give us something, do something for me so that way I can be assured. That's wrong and that's bad. But what I do want you to think about and to consider is, well, is the Lord among me? Is the Lord with me? That's a pretty normal question. Christians should ask themselves that from time to time just because it's good for your faith. It's good to think about whether or not God is truly with you. This is not testing God. This is not demanding that God do something for you. This is examining your own life to ensure that, well, you're still a Christian, to ensure that you're still doing the things that God wants you to do, to ensure that you still have faith. It's good to remind yourself of these things once in a while. But here's what I want you to focus on. When you do ask those questions, when you do ask if God is with you or if you have faith, I don't want you to look inside yourself to see if maybe, gosh, have I tried enough? Have I believed hard enough? If you look at yourself as your source of faith, you will always, always fall short. This can easily lead you to doubt your faith and to doubt God and to doubt the things that God has given to you, to doubt the forgiveness of sins. And that's never good. That can drive a Christian to despair. And that is when things take a turn for the worse. So instead of looking to yourself to see if you really believe hard enough, to see if your faith is strong enough from the things that you have done, instead, Look to the things that God does for you. When you ask yourself if you have faith, don't look at yourself. Look at what God has done for you. Look to your baptism. That is where God promises, promises to you that you have the forgiveness of sins. That's where God promises that he gives you his Holy Spirit. That's where God promises that he makes you his own child, where he places his name upon you. That's where you can look to be absolutely sure that you are a child of God. And then look at the other things that God has given to you as well. Go to the word of God to learn more about what God has done for you. Read through the gospels, understand what has gone on there. Understand what Christ has done for you, his suffering, his death, his resurrection the forgiveness of sins that he won for you. And then look at the Lord's Supper. If you partake, if you are confirmed in the LCMS, go there and know for sure 
that your sins are forgiven when you eat the bread and drink the cup, because in that bread is the true body of Christ. In that cup is the true blood of Christ given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. If you look elsewhere for faith, for forgiveness of sins, for any kind of life whatsoever, anywhere other than the things that God has given to you, you're always going to be disappointed. This happens quite a bit out in society. If you look around and hear the critiques of Christianity, people will say, oh, look at these Christians. They clearly don't love God. They're, tr they're clearly not real Christians. Otherwise, they would be doing X, Y, and Z. Maybe it's that we would sell all of our buildings, we'd sell our church and just give everything to the poor because that's what a true Christian would do. Or maybe Christians just aren't quite kind enough. Or maybe Christians just don't truly care about anyone but themselves. Everybody else, society, places all these burdens upon Christianity that God does not place. Christianity is not just a community center where we give out free things and free stuff to people. Christianity is the religion, the faith that God has given to his people so that way he can forgive their sins and draw them closer to him. So don't get discouraged. Don't get distracted. Don't do any of these quarreling or, or testing or anything like that that God's people has done in the past. Instead, have faith. Have faith in the things that God gives to you. Have faith in the promises that he makes to you. Have faith in Jesus Christ and his forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs>